Today I'm going to go over how to do rear and front adjustment on the Cyberbike Raptor. We'll go over how to adjust it out of the box and then some more fine tuned adjustments that you may want to do while you're out on the trail to improve your riding performance and your riding experience. On your rear suspension there are three main points of adjustment. You have the air chamber which can be adjusted here just by removing this and we will take our shock pump, the one provided by a cyber bike in your box or one that you may have picked up from your local bike shop or online. These shocks are high pressure, low volume. So using a normal bike pump on them could damage it resulting in its failure. So make sure you always use a designated shock pump to adjust your rear shock. We're gonna take the shock pump if our lever's in the way, we can just move it out. We're going to turn it on. And then go ahead and pump it up using the shock pump to the desired pressure. The correct pressure from you is based off of your weight and that can be found on the Cyberbike website or in your Cyberbike owner's manual. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out. We're happy to help. You can see that the pressure currently in the shock is there on the gauge. And this little red button here can be used to make minor adjustments, releasing pressure from the shock. Removing the shock pump without losing your air is a bit different than a normal pump. We're going to take this lower one here and we're going to start to twist it out. This will relieve tension from the plunger built into the system without letting pressure out of the shock itself. Once that is fully extended there, we can then go and let air let this off. And that little bit of air you heard leak out was just air coming out of the tube here, not out of your shock. This is still set to 100 PSI. After we've done that, we go ahead and put our cap back on. The next adjustment we'll go over is your rebound adjustment. That is right here. Rebound adjustment controls how fast the shock returns to its original position. So if we twist it all the way over, away from the bike, and then we push down on the shock, you can see that it returns very, very slowly to the original position because we have a low rebound. If we push it, if we turn the knob all the way towards the bike, now you can see that we have a very fast rebound. Normally you're gonna land somewhere in the middle depending on what type of trail you're riding. If you're riding on a very rocky, bumpy, rough trail, you may want less rebound so you don't get bounced off the bike. And if you're riding on a more smooth, rolly trail, then you may want to rebound. So you can ensure that your shock will always be in the most upward position, ensuring that you can actually use all the suspension that this rear one has to offer. Your last point of adjustment is gonna be your lever here. There are three points on this lever in here. And I'll do something a little different, so we'll go over all of them. This one right here, if you're turned all the way to the right side. This locks out your shock. Now your shock is never gonna be completely turned off, but this will allow for as minimal travel as possible when you're riding on the road or to the trail, or if you just don't need your rear shock turned on at that point. This middle one here, you can see that that is a very good neutral position. That's gonna be what most of your riding is gonna be done in. That's your shock all the way on. Now this all the way to the left here, we can see that that is a rebound, a quick rebound adjustment. That one will quickly make your rebound faster. And inversely, this one will quickly make your rebound slower for fine tuned adjustments while riding so you don't have to mess with your little colander. I want to set the colander first and then that will dictate how much change we see from this little lever here. Next, we're gonna go over how to adjust your front suspension 
also called your fork. Here on the right side, we have our lockout. This will turn your fork on and off, very similar to the rear suspension. And over here, we have the air. This will allow you to pump up your front fork to the desired pressure based off your weight. Very similar to the rear suspension, but your fork does have a different chart. It takes different pressures, so make sure you are using the correct chart dependent on which suspension you are airing up. Here on the air side, just like with the rear suspension, we are going to only use a shock pump to pump this up. We are going to go ahead and put on our pump. Remembering that a little bit of air may leak out, but that's okay. Then we will pump it up to our desired pressure. Once we are at our desired pressure, just like with the rear, we are going to undo this top column here. Slowly releasing the plunger built into the valve. Once it's all the way out, then we can go and remove our main valve. A little bit of air leaks out of the tube, not of the fork. And now we are set to the correct pressure and we're ready to ride. After we have it all aired up, we are going to go ahead and put our little cap back on there securely. 